Oh, we in? Christy. Okay, welcome to the channel. I'm Stanley and Ben, and today we're going to be talking about why things are seen. Okay, so this is an important part of field craft because it's um, essentially methods of how we spot the enemy, uh, but also how the enemy spot us. So you need to take that in con into consideration. All right. Now, after watching this video, you can go away and apply these methods to a variety of games where, like, an enemy needs to be spotted and like taken out. So, shooting marks, for example, like Call of Duty, PUBG, Fortnite, whatever. But uh, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about, you do subconsciously anyway. But uh, the purpose of this video is just to give you some insight and methods uh, into why things are seen. So, I hope you enjoy. Okay. So, the methods uh, or acronym we will be using is the five S's and the M which are as follows, you've got shape, shine, shadow, silhouette, spacing and movement and we'll kind of talk about them individually but first um, I just want you to look to the front like, as you can see like nature is quite irregular but it all blends well together and it's like now and again broken up by certain features you can see like the radio mast there in the background you've got like a few towers here you've got the village, okay, you've got the shoreline, you've got the fob down here alright um, so like certain features and landmarks like bold objects they catch the eye and they stand out right now I'm using uh, armor to demonstrate this video because I feel it's so underrated as a military aid um, I mean I've got military background ex war marines um, and we used to in training we used to use like these SART which uh, ranges which were like these small sort of tunnel ranges which had a, a screen and a fake gun um, just to see your reactions with certain scenarios alright now I think you could so implement this with armor I mean this is why I use it I've done a couple of videos now our uh, target indication and fire control orders uh, using armor as a lot of backdrop do you know what I mean so the, the, the potentials there if, uh, if you've got a sort of military uh, background and you wish to like demonstrate something um, so I'd love to see this in training to be honest like going from PowerPoint to showing a video to actually going out and practicing it but yeah that's another another story okay so let's get into it then so the first S uh, is shape now when I talk about shape like the human body is probably one of the most recognizable shapes we see okay because we usually see this shape every day right and the main things that stand out are the head shoulders legs and arms all right so these are the things that stand out with um, like an enemy that you want to take out because the head is quite an irregular shape isn't it sitting on top of the uh, shoulders and the legs they just dangle about don't they like legs and arms they just dangle about right? so the human body is very recognizable other things that stand out uh, are weapon systems right? kit and equipment right? these things stand out now you'd be surprised that you could spot what a weapon looks like at about five things like 600 meters do you know what I mean I mean, I work in anti-piracy, and I can ping a weapon at about 500 meters. Now, obviously, using binos, but uh, it's a highly recognisable shape that stands out. All right. So yeah, kit and equipment, head and shoulders. These are the main things that stand out with shape. Now, there's things that you can use to break up this shape, such as like scrim nets. Um, I'll show you a scrim net here. So this guy here, you can see he's got a scrim net on top. All right. You see the guy on the left. He had like a bold helmet, which is like. He's not breaking up the shape of the helmet, whereas a scrim net does. All right, so straight away he's breaking up the the shape of the helmet. Now you can see his shoulders do stand out slightly, but with his rucksack and the uh, roll mat he's got on top, it kind of breaks up his shoulders. Okay, now a lot of people don't know this, but in the Marines we used to have our roll mats um, like on the top of our bergens. Putting something on the top of your bergen actually breaks up your shape. I didn't know that. I just I just used to carry it until like a sergeant told me. So it actually breaks up your your shoulders if you think about it like if the enemy's looking to you to the front it breaks up your shoulders and I was like fair one with kit and equipment on the back uh, you need to be careful with uh, what you have exposed on the back because like colors can be pingable yeah if you've got weapon systems on your back they can be pingable right so you need to be careful with kit and equipment that you carry on your back or whatever um, can you be seen with it on yeah so the enemy's always like looking at you as well um, so yeah, you've got uh, scrim nets and then you've got head and shoulders, all right? Head and shoulders is uh, another name for like a half ghillie suit, right? This is like a, I wouldn't even say this is a full ghillie suit, it's like a three quarter ghillie suit. But in the Marines, you would wear like a half ghillie suit, which is like head and shoulders, all right? So where, where he's sort of, um, where his shoulders are, yeah, we would obviously do a scrim net and it would come down to our shoulders just to break up 
our head and shoulders. So that's why it's called a head and shoulders, right? But it is essentially a smally sort of uh, scrim there or ghillie suit, right? But as you can see, then the sniper, then obviously you can't see his head or his shoulders. These guys are the kings of camouflage, right? Kings of concealment, yeah. I mean, compared to the first one, I mean, even standing there, you can see he stands out because there's a massive, there's a massive difference there from his uh, head to his shoulders. There, isn't it? There's a big space, yeah. Whereas this guy is had it broken up by his roll mat and his day sack strap, and then with the sniper, then. If he turns to me, can't even see it, it just slopes, yeah. So he's breaking up the shape completely, right? Now there's other things you can do to break up the shape of the weapon systems then. You can use tape, you can use um, foliage, right? And you can also use uh, like different colour patterns, yeah. Well, like lads paint their weapons all the time. So you can see that it kind of breaks up the shape, right? See the foliage of the weapon system, and all you can see is the suppressor. If the suppressor wasn't in there, you would, you'd hardly see that weapon, right? Right, so that's breaking up the shape, uh, and that is how we do it. Right. Also, this is how we distinguish friend from foe: is uh, like kit, equipment, and weapon systems. All right. So um, it just shows uh, good situational awareness. If you're pinging a lad, yeah, like 600 meters away, you don't know if they're enemy. Their kit and equipment will give them away. All right. So don't go blatting rounds at them straight away. Just take the second, just to identify. Can you recognise that weapon? Yeah. The SAA is a ballpark design. So it's a close knit weapon that will always be pulled close to the body, yeah. Whereas like compared to this, yeah, the magazine will stick out and then fall in it. So yeah, different weapon systems, different shapes, alright. Uh how we dictate, distinguish friend from foe, alright? So that is shape. Now next one I'm gonna talk about then is shine. Now these are surfaces, textures, colours, um, but also like with shine it's like a heliograph effect. Uh, so you can see, you can see the shine from his toes. Yeah, it's the sexy toes, right? And then you can see. So skin shines, right? Especially wet skin, wet weapons, right? It all shines. You can see the shine on this guy's neck, uh, on his forearms as well. Sorry. All right. So you've got um, skin, face, hands, neck. All these things can create shine. Doesn't really matter what colour you are. If you're a black guy and your skin's wet, it's still going to shine. All right. So this is why we have our arms. Uh, sorry, our outfit rolled down. Yeah, I know it's hot, but you want to sort of cover up your hands. Yeah, you want to be using cam cream on your face. I mean, this guy, look, he's got every, he's got even got a balaclava on, so he's covering everything. Yeah, shine. Okay, so tape on your weapon systems can also reduce shine. All right, yeah. So that's a good thing to take in consideration. All right, uh, but textures and colours then. So. You can see this guy isn't very tactical, is he? <laughs> You'd actually be surprised how many guys crack this uh, outfit in like Iraq and Afghanistan. It's like uh, private military contractors. Yeah, this is this is basically my rig when I work away. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's not very tactical at all. Whereas uh, there's your bog standard boot neck. Yeah, looking looking the biz. All right, he's got his uh, his arms rolled down, his scrim net on, he's covering his face up, which is cool. Yeah, he's got his ballistic glasses on. Yeah, he's got his gloves on. He's looking good. All right. Uh, but it, the colour is MTB background. I mean, look, blends in with the grass, doesn't it? Whereas this guy doesn't. He stands out. And if I sh if I ping this civvy over here, all right, I put a little civvy in here earlier. Where is he? Oh boy. Is he up there? Where you at? Where you at, fella? Let's have a look. Is he over there? Yeah, there he is. Look. See, look. Why does he stand out? Why does he stand out? Colour. Yeah. Look at the colour of the blue shirt. Stands out massively. The colour of these two enemies, yellow, alright, that's texture, stands out. You see a little bit of shine on him, shape, head and shoulders, yeah. A little bit of shine on his arms, maybe, alright. Shine from his white belt, maybe. Okay. So that is uh, shine. So textures, colours, alright, so when you're choosing your outfit, this comes down to like your squad selection or whatever. But if you're going into a certain terrain, uh, and you know what sort of foliage you're going to be up against, that will dictate what you wear. Obviously, if you're in Arctic conditions, you'll be wearing Arctic clothing. If you're in wood, wooding conditions, you'll be wearing the uh, sort of wood line and stuff. But actually, wood line does conceal you anyway, so um, it wouldn't really matter too much. But desert rigs, if you're out in uh, open spaces, all right, open ground. Okay, so that's, that's uh, shine, textures, and colors, all right. 
Next one then is shadows. Uh, the important thing about shadows is um, you need to know the sun's location. Not all the time, but just generally, right? Um, because you obviously will dictate where the shadow will be on an object. But shadows have got good and bad points about them. Now, uh, if I was in this sort of wood line here, and I find my weapon, right? What do you see? Muzzle flashes, yeah? Alright. So, if the enemy sees me engaging, I'm a target straight away, and I because they'll just they're fire in that direction. So muzzle flashes, all right. So if you're ever in like cut, like shadows are awesome because they can conceal you and um, reduce your whole profile, all right? You you can go in there straight away because I'm changing my colour, aren't I? I'm concealed, so I'm, with concealment will break my uh, head and shoulders, like you won't be able to see me. But as soon as I fuck, as soon as I engage, all right? Like it just is pointless because the the, mu the muzzle flash will supersede my cover, right? So yeah, shadows are great, but well, when you're moving from cover to cover, you want to be using shadows because they like if you're not intent if you don't have intentions to fire, then you should just like crack on and just use them. So this tree here and this tree will find a, a little bit of concealment, but the shadow will be great. So if I'm uh, patrolling along, and my corporal's like, right, let's take a quick map check. Uh, Take a knee underneath this tree, watch your arcs, alright? We're all, in, all concealed, aren't we? This enemy on this hilltop won't be able to see us in the shadow, but as soon as we punch out, he might see us because of our spacing, our movement, obviously, alright? But yeah, you should be trying to utilise shadows if you can. Um, obviously, be aware that shadows can also give your position away, alright? So, where's the sun here? Alright, so you can see my shadow here. Um, if it was slightly to my right and I pop around this corner, this enemy might see my shadow before me, okay? So be aware of that, alright? Shadows can potentially give you a position away. But yeah, they can be great for cover and concealment. But look at the backdrop there, alright? Only if the enemy can see me. If there's an enemy on that island, I'm giving myself away and I'm, I'm kind of silhouetted there. Alright, so potentially I want to be, yeah, shadow. Alright? So that's shadows then. Um, know the sun's location, they can seal you, they counter shine, move from cover to cover, alright. Um, I would utilise them but just be aware, alright, if, you, if you're engaging in shadows then muzzle flash is going to give you away, alright. Oh, let's give this bike a break, it's hanging out. What's he carrying? Mini me. Jesus, come on lad. Right, so silhouettes then, also known as skyline, alright, these are easy to spot because you break the backdrop, okay, like, uh, let's say like fields, lakes, skies, the different colours, yeah? So shape, spacing, movement, it, it's all going to become apparent like these, like, there you go, perfect example, straight away there, look, all right, radio moss. Yeah, why do they stand out? Because they're a different shape, different colour to their backdrop, right? The backdrop being the sky, yeah, different colour, different shape, stands out, doesn't it? Anything on that sort of ridge line stands out because it's not blue. Right, it stands out massively. Um, but silhouettes are important in battle because let's say, I w right, so these three guys, right? Let's say I was attacking them from down here. Now I know they're up there, but I don't know exactly where they are. If I come storming over the storming over the uh, hilltop like this, oh, yeah, all right, let's go. Boom! They're going to see me straight away, aren't they? Because I'm skyline with this backdrop, that's all they're going to see. So if I know they're that lo in that location, then I want to be left flanking, traversing up this mountain top and using this building to break my skyline, right? Yeah, so when you're like moving up on the hilltops, you want to be, so let's say that um, I was attacking that uh, radio tower up the top, I wouldn't go straight up the top. I'd be using as much cover as I could. I'd be using all this f uh, terrain up to maybe this tower and then coming at it from like a right flank, all right? I just want to go straight up over the top and try and kill them because you'll get smashed, all right? But that's, that is silhouettes, okay? Also known as skyline. So you, you always should try and avoid skylines whenever possible, all right? So that's silhouettes then. Um, next one is spacing, okay? Now, there's pros and cons to spacing. Uh, equal distance uh, isn't natural. Now look at the three of us here, right? Or well, the four, yeah, four of us here. 
we're sort of like equally spaced. This isn't natural, really, so it's quite pingable. It's quite noticeable. When you're spacing, like the reasons why I, you could see the civilian over here, I can find him, right? It's a crazy space between these two rocks. The reason I can see these two targets here is because of the spacing between the rock and this single tree down here, right? Uh, let's find another example. The reason I can see this vehicle is spacing between this house and, yeah, I'm just saying it, that things stand out if they're spaced. Yeah, so when you're patrolling along um, in open grounds, you want to stagger your spacing. So one guy like 5 meters, one guy 20 meters. It doesn't really matter too much in wood lines because you've got concealment from the air with a wood line. But you need you don't want to be too far apart because you'll lose guys, especially at night in the wood line, right? But yeah, spacing is quite massive and it, uh, it's easy to ping targets if, if they're spaced between two objects, right? So that's like, I can... I can ping this tree because it's spaced between these two masts, alright? Okay, so that is uh, a spacing. And the number one reason then why uh, things are seen is finally movement. Um, it's eye-catching, right? You become fixated on that object. So, let me give you an example, right? So with movement then, it all sort of comes together. So what we're talking about there is like shape, shine, shadow, silhouette, spacing. It all comes to, it all conjoins with movement, right? So first of all, initially, you will ping the movement of that target. Then you'll recognize the shape. Then you'll start looking at shine, shallow colors, textures, right? And then you'll start looking at silhouetting and stuff like that. And then it'll become space between objects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to like, I've got a guy down there and I'm just going to blast some rounds at him. Uh, poor bastard, but... Yeah, I need it for the demo. Oh, well, there's four of them. Now, I don't know how far away they are. They look about, what, 600 metres, maybe? So, look. 604. All right, so let's have a look. Let's just uh, blow a few rounds at them and see what they do. Now, straight away, why do we see them? Okay. What did we say before at the beginning? Shape, right? That is a very unique shape, isn't it? But the main reason we see them is because they're silhouetted. So, shape and silhouetted. Also, you've got textures. They're different colours to their backgrounds, yeah? Can we see any weapon systems, maybe? This is 600 meters away, right? If they were closer, potentially we could have seen uh, distinguishable weapons, right? But at the minute, we can see them because of their shape, um, their textures, and their silhouetted, right? But now watch what happens when I start blatting rounds at them, right? Right, hopefully we get some movement. Right, let's go, fellas, come on. Rounds are coming down. What are you going to do? You're just going to stay there? I want to see some movement, gents. Come on, we're going to get any movement from any of you. Come on. There must be some sort of tactical intelligence amongst some of you. Oh, right, we've got slight movement there, right. So it was eye-catching straight away, wasn't it? All right, yeah, it's eye-catching. Now, I wish they were moving more for the demonstration, but obviously not. So anyway. Yeah, Right, so anyway, right, so that's movement. Now, uh, if you ever see like kids watching TV, like Teletubbies and stuff, they're fixated, aren't they? Reason being is because the colours and the movements, right? They're always jumping about on TV and kids are fascinated by it. I mean, that, that's part of our instincts. We're always drawn to movements, so it's the first thing that sort of stands out. Uh, there you go, look, movement of the clouds of that campfire. It stands out, doesn't it? All right. So yeah, movement is the number one reason why things are seen. Um, so yeah, that completes the methods of why like things are seen. But um, how can we counter these? Now that's this is the main thing. Now at the beginning we said this is how the enemy sees you. Now we counter we counter these with good camouflage and concealment. And we'll, I'll quickly talk about these um, because a soldier must know like how to cam in common self uh, effectively in battle. It would just be an easy target for the enemy. So you need to be able to see without being seen. Right, so camouflage destroys the contrast of what we've just talked about. So shape, silhouette, shine, shadow. Uh, so you are less conspicuous. Right. So cam creams, 
utilizing shadows okay uniform pattern so choosing your equipment correctly using ghillie suits using rifle tape using foliage on your weapon systems all these can be used to like break up your profile and blend in with your surroundings so try and think like a chameleon all right so that is like camouflage and then concealment then is making the best use of like available cover from view without sacrificing your field of fire so shadows again large bushes trees forests all right can conceal you right uh, especially forests from like aerial threats uh, choose your backdrops in your cover similar to what you're wearing yeah and then that comes down to root selection all right so your root selection should incorporate what camouflage and concealment is available so if i was going to attack this fob with the kit and equipment i've got on i'm going to be looking at things like these trees okay bounding from one bush to another sorry not trees bushes bounding from one bush to another okay get they've got a little bit of cover there with the rock face okay and then maybe round to the right hitting the uh the wall there popping smoke popping a few grenades and then just pushing on in all right so i'm um, yeah root, using root selection so if i'm attacking the village then i've got all this foliage to the left i've got no real cover maybe a little bit of cover with the rock face on the right but i'm too exposed so I'd have a better chance left flanking, using like utilizing all that foliage, getting myself into an LOP or an LOD, and then just like smashing it, right? So yeah, root selection is a massive part of uh, camouflage and concealment. Uh, so yeah, that concludes it then. So in summary, yeah, just remember, kit and equipment plays a vital role. Uh, remember, cover from view isn't necessarily cover from fire. Yeah, you've got indirect fire, uh, mortars, artillery, stuff like that. Utilize shadows and cover at all times and where possible. And remember, like root selection is obviously very important uh, as to like, why things are seen. Yeah, because you want to like counteract being seen. All right. So yeah, that concludes today's video. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it and learned a little something that you can take away and apply. Um, if you did, then feel free to give it a like or a comment. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content. Just let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you have any preferences or ideas about future content. That being said, enjoy your day. Peace out.